Hello and welcome to White Center Noise Podcast. I'm Oscar Bromo and today my guest is Saudi of Two Assistant Deputy Ministers, a noise super maniac originally from Canada who lives in Japan for the last 20 plus years and known for his extremely abrasive harsh noise project. There's some very special bonus content with this episode, so if you're a fan of this podcast, be sure to head over to patreon.com slash white center noise afterwards and check it out. All right. Hello, Sadi. Welcome to White Centipede Noise Podcast. Well, thank you, Oscar. Thank pleasure. you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to see you and um, hear about your wild noise life. <laughs> yeah, not that, not that wild, <clears throat> but you know, noise is involved at different junctures. So, so you just, I mean, just as a backstory, you're very very well known to i think a lot of people who have been deep in the noise scene for a long time because you've been in, involved for a very very long time and, and had your hand in a lot of interesting things um but for those who may not know who you are can you give a brief introduction to who you are sure um uh, my name is uh saudi and and i'm a wanker <laughs> thank you very much okay um yeah. been in japan for a little while um uh, more than 20 years now um originally from canada and um yeah not not actually mega active in the recent years uh, i mean in the local scene so to speak but uh still very much active in you know my interest in noise and all that how's that sure um, so just, yeah. how did you end Sorry. up in in japan I mean, you're from Canada. You've been in Japan for 20 years now. How did that end up, and what 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 do you do there? What's that all about? If you can divulge a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, I've got I've got no skills whatsoever, so I teach. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, at a at a uni or two, um, <clears throat> and do other stuff as well as as people in my position might might be inclined to do. Mm-hmm. Um, how did I get here? Um, yeah, it was it was. Um, My intention probably was similar to a lot of um, persons such as myself, uh, that is to just do the Japan thing for a year or two, and then it just seemed to continue to three and then four, and then, I don't know, it's been a while now checking my watch, 24 years or something like that. So yeah, I guess the years <clears throat> accumulate. Did, did your interest in Japanese noise play a role in for sure coming absolutely. There? absolutely okay so, so so you were you were interested in noise and all that before moving to japan oh yeah yeah uh interested in noise corresponding with noise people um had been in what the hell was that chat session that was it was set up by stimbox uh uh-huh. tim with uh kenny facial mess i'm all a fucking hung over again mate fuck you know this is all yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've been in regular correspondence with a lot of people, uh, mostly written letter type of correspondence. And on the Western side, some of the folks had email and uh, were active in like the alt noise news groups and stuff like that, and other chat groups and uh, mailing lists and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, definitely without question, uh, the interest in noise absolutely uh, was uh, what. F- brought me here i here japan yeah, yeah. okay yeah. who were some of your other earlier contacts in those days and, and and you know i have to ask you the ubiquitous question but how did you get into noise um yeah well i was i was gonna kind of make a joke um my mom tells the story of a one-year-old me you know uh, in, in grandma's house wailing on all the pots and pans like a baby's ev so that was probably the first instance Next instance would have been probably the age of, uh, I don't know, five or six with one of those pencil mics stuffed halfway down my throat trying to imitate the Death Star and make explosion sounds like, mm-hmm. you know, like maybe Krumer or something. Uh, I watched the WCN episode, so I know. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so on. I don't know. My, my dad would take us to the airport and he'd be like, listen to that. You hear that? 
that's a DC-8 or a DC-10. And I'm like, okay, cool that. But, you know, I don't think I ever told him this. And he still rides me about my, you know, my stupid noise interest. You know, I should probably bring that story back to him. Probably get a good laugh. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of elements. Oh, another good one was um, I had this memory as a little kid sitting in front of the stereo, flipping the dial trying to hear that music that I, I, I've, I've written this before on the forums, you know, I knew it existed. I absolutely knew it existed because I had heard it before many times in my dreams. Well, more specifically, probably in movies and TV and stuff like 2001, a space odyssey. I probably heard the Getty. It's probably in my brain somewhere, you know, basically Ligeti atmospheres, Requiem amplify that it's fucking incapacitance, right? That's what it is. So, I mean, you know, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of elements, would have snowballed into contributing to that. But generally it was, um, as a Canadian, as a Torontonian, uh, there were actually three college stations, believe it or not. Uh, and all of them late at night. So not when six year old me would have been flipping the dials in the, in the middle of the day, but typically late night, they'd play all the crazy stuff, like every, anything, anything and everything. Um, you name it. Um, one of the best, <clears throat> one of my favorites was, um, it was, uh, Mitchell Kroll, the demon, the demon mm -hmm. uh, of, a, of, a, of a project called Masochistic Religion. Mm -hmm. uh, no longer active, and I believe he is a she now, um, mm -hmm. still going strong in various capacities. Uh, but he had this show that he would do called um, Beyond the Gates of Hell, with this pitch-shifted voice way the hell down, and these mournful violins. And he'd come on, you know, you are listening to Beyond the Gates of Hell, you know, with, with the echoing. And then he <clears throat> later on, he brought in the Pit of Eternal Suffering, which sounded like a slow down orgy. The Pit of it, <clears throat> the Pit of Eternal Suffering, ladies and gentlemen, the Pit. So, and then he'd play all the crazy, wacky music, a lot of goth stuff. Eric, Edward Spell, and Kerr ninety three, and stuff like that. But also noise too. And then, of course, at uh, I guess the show moved around a fair bit, uh, but the longest permanent slot for that show was from midnight to 6 a.m. And at 3.33, the hour of Satan. And he'd always do some kind of poetry or some kind of crazy shit, um, yeah. noise and stuff. So I, and that was one show, and there were a lot of other shows. But wow. this, this guy was my favorite. He was just so fucking funny, right? Uh, and he just, you know, he's like, who knows, who cares, fuck everything. <laughs> with, his, <laughs> with his distorted voice. He did this great routine about. Uh, it's, it's based on an old, an old joke uh, about Brian Mulroney. You know, six thousand years ago, <clears throat> Moses said, "Where did he say? Take up your camel, lead your ass, and I will take you to the promised land." Two thousand years later, Trudeau said, "The other show, the older show." <clears throat> Put down your shovel, sit on your ass, light up a camel. This is the promised land. This year, Brian Mulroney will take your shovel, sell your camel, and kick your ass. And tell you, na, 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 he gave away the promised land. I am glad that I am Canadian. I am glad that I am free. But I truly wish I were a dog and that Brian were a tree. And I, I listened to that numerous times as a kid. Wow, this guy's, this guy's the funniest fucking guy ever. And, you know, playing weird, crazy, fucked up music. And uh, so, yeah, definitely college radio was a major, a major thing. Um, you know, and I'd listen to that religiously and record tapes upon tapes upon tapes, you know, getting mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night and recording and then rewinding and making sure I had a nice, you know, 90 minute tape of music cool. and all that shit. Yeah. So, I don't know, it just seemed kind of natural that you'd kind of, at some point get into noise i guess you know yeah and even people would often say even back then you know i think it's it's hard to get a good noise to be honest it is it's harder than you think um mm -hmm. and who was that guy from was it deadlines deadlines uh oh, fuck. god damn it anyway some dude uh, so there were influential people making, you know, feedback based guitar noise and stuff like that, telling impressionable 14 year old me that, you know, this stuff is harder to do than real music. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, of course it is. You must know because you're a person who does it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, does that answer your question? I forget. What yeah, question that, was. no, that's, that's that's amazing. I mean, yeah. that's 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 very that's very interesting. And uh, what about so so then? How did that then lead to your first correspondences or contacts within like the scene, so to speak? I mean, you were kind of an outsider there yeah. at this point, just kind of like taping stuff and wow, this is interesting. But <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. Uh, I guess the first. Uh, probably so it was the guy from um, Freedom in a Vacuum is it Robert Oliver I think from Freedom in a Vacuum mm -hmm. he opened a shop called Hypermedia uh, which dealt exclusively with awesome music it was all awesome and I think one of his suppliers was Records mm -hmm. you know so I bought like the, the Testament LP somewhere around here anyway and inside there was a records catalog you know so i pulled that out i was like holy fucking shit everything here is awesome even more awesome than the shop unbelievable you know so i immediately you know went through it and circled all the stuff that i wanted and then sent in my order to records and uh, you know then he wrote me back and said okay well none of this stuff is in stock anymore but uh, here's our new catalog <laughs> anyway. so yeah i guess so then from there i don't know started ordering noise shit and um i don't remember the first things that i ordered at all i i didn't really have any correspondence with ron um but yeah there were a lot of things going on at the same time so there was the you know there's the internet going on too yeah um you know let's say in the early 90s i mean i i've heard people say that the internet did not exist in the 90s but it did and before that, there were also computer bulletin board systems and stuff like that, which were kind of a semi-internet. So that was like, even, even in the 80s, people were communicating, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, you know, there was a lot of uh, online correspondence, so to speak, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there were a lot of people contributing in various capacities, you know, to various uh, Usenet news groups. <clears throat> Uh, you know, and it, it's the funniest thing, like alt noise, if anyone knows the history of alt noise, it, it, it was not made for the purpose of discussion, discussing noise. It was just one of those many alt news groups that somehow people interested in noise gravitated to. And, you know, in between million and one porn advertisements, you'd get someone talking about Merzbau or whatever the hell, right? Mm -hmm. So, and all the same, same old arguments and all the rest of it that we, that we get today about what is music and noise and all that stuff that, was great fun to contribute to and um cool so i yeah so it's probably con you know in contact with people through that or then and then through that via email from time to time and you know i can't isolate a specific person or place sure uh but yeah i was um you have some of the earlier you ahead, have go quite a, you have quite a like a uh at least on forums that I've been a part of, you know, of a slightly later, later generation, you've had yep. quite a presence in your writing, particularly like your, your, I would say prose, your, your, your texts, your reviews with a certain character, I would okay. say. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of poop and shit gets thrown in there. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no but, idea. What was this, was this, I mean, I want to ask you a little bit. I want to talk a little bit more your, about your writing in general and, and writing about noise in general. But were you were you writing in the same way back then, like this um, on these on these boards and uh, from an early from an early age? Was that something that you gravitated to towards quickly? This <laughs> this kind of fantastical review and prose and I go, I guess when I was a kid, by some of my teachers encouraged me to like read out the things that I'd written to the class, and people would laugh. And so that was that was a thing when I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, actually, the first I guess the first review, so to speak, was when Romer Joe Romer of Macroniv asked me to like just post uh, the latest uh, Mother Savage catalog. You know, he's like, "You're online, all right. Well, why don't you post this?" I'm like, "Sure, sure, why not?" So I did. And then, uh, you know, I just, I kind of ad-libbed from what he had put in his own thing about the MXM, you know, unrelenting noise nightmare or something like that. So that, that was maybe the first thing I wrote where I was, maybe I had added an extra five or six words to what was in the catalog, you know. Um, 
And yeah, that was a, that was a great release, by the way. MXM, first one, oh, third organ. Not, yeah, absolutely. it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, where was I? Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I guess at some point I just started writing more. What and, compels uh, you to write so much and write in the way that you do? I don't know. What compels people to do anything, you know? <clears throat> why, why, do, why do people climb mountains? Come on. It's there. Yeah, okay. Why, why did you, why, why did you, what compelled you to write about noise? Because it was there. Yeah. Because I had, because I had a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, and I guess there weren't a lot of people actually writing about harsh, harsh noise, you know, yeah. so to speak. I mean, um, not, I mean, that I, I, there were a lot of fanzine, fl fanzines flying around, right? Um, but at least online, in the online forums, and let's say alt noise, which kind of didn't exist and, and mostly seemed to just have a lot of, you know, like phone sex ads and stuff like that, and a little bit of discussion here and there. Um, yeah, so there wasn't a lot that was kind of being formally written online. So I guess that was kind of an, an, an inspirational point mm -hmm. there you know someone's got to do it i guess mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um and i guess like like anything else when you encounter stuff that's really super awesome you just want to tell the world right it's like you know um probably i really started writing more and more when i started uh getting stuff stuff from like self-abuse right mm -hmm. uh uh, like everything on self abuse, I got was awesome, and you know, I only regret that I didn't get more of it. But you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it was all awesome, and uh, couldn't wait to tell everyone how awesome it was. So that that was it, and so yeah, I guess that. Do you, do you feel still feel that same sort of excitement and and energy and desire to oh, yeah. spread the word today? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, maybe I don't have the same kind of evangelical bent which you know was i don't know it was it was kind of a caricature you know to an extent i i, I concede uh you know a self you know there, there was a bit of a character element a self characterization a level of uh you know fun in, involved there but um you know i only i only do harsh noise only the harshest fucking noise okay um but Wait, what was your question? Can you repeat the question? If you still feel that same uh, yeah, desire to yeah. to shout it yeah. from the mountaintop, yeah. Except that, of course, there's there's a lot of converts, and there's there's people who are probably way more passionate about noise than me at this point, and you know, so I, so you know, I don't feel like I need to be evangelical about it. I could just kind of tell people, hey, this is fucking awesome, or just whatever, um, or just 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 I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest. Um, you know, it, it, you typically, why do I post online? It's because, um, you know, I, I j I've just gotten into one or two of these too many, and I just feel like I feel compelled to write stuff. And it kind of works like that with noise, too. Okay, cool. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm totally into the noise. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going I'm to write something. And then I wake up the next day, and it's like totally incomprehensible. I'm like, okay, I'll try to kind of semi-glue uh, glue that together and make it semi-readable. And not good enough, fuck it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I notice, yeah, yeah. You, if you're if you're hanging on the boards, you can you you can always get the first draft and the second draft of your posts. You get the first draft, which is like full on, and then you get the second draft where it's like edited this date, and then it's like you're like, ah, yeah, I don't know, that was <laughs> less, less angry and more more guarded, you know, it's, you know, less <laughs> less taking the piss and ripping on people and stuff like that. Yeah, obviously, that's cool though. Yeah. So yeah. we haven't touched on this at all, I, guess, I, I don't think um, yet, but. You also have a noise project. You're a noise artist, and you are known as T A D M, two assistant, two oh, assistant sorry. deputy deputy ministers. Excuse me. That's right. If I'm, yeah, you got it right. If I'm not mistaken, right. who is T A D M? Well, <clears throat> I keep saying, I keep telling people, man, T A D M does not exist. It's two assistant deputy ministers. Okay, there is no T A D M. There is no TADM, only two assistant deputy ministers. Okay. Can people not get this through? Anyway, it was, it was really a mistake having a, having a project name with so many goddamn syllables in it that you'd, you'd have to shorten it, but it just didn't occur to me at the time. But yeah, 
<clears throat> so, so the abbreviation um, was never your choice. Of course not. But you know, it's it's like anything else. Like maybe SPK never wanted to shorten out down to SPK, but that just happened. You know, so like okay. whatever. I, so okay, yeah, then I'll, I'll refer to you as two assistant deputy ministers from now on. Yeah, j- just as I only refer to Hasegawa's you know X project as you know Cosmic Coincidence Control Center only. Hey, okay. not, 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 not only joking. But, you know, Cosmic Cock Commandos or whatever, whatever they are. You know. <clears throat> Uh, anyways, um, sorry. So, yeah, um, I keep interrupting myself. This is great. Worst interview okay. ever. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, yeah, I guess it's a project, although I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't refer to myself as an artist. Um, project barely exists, you know, but anyway, but it, but it's done stuff and it, I've, I've performed and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Tell, say more about it. I mean, it's 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 a great project, and it's very low output. It's very it's it's, it's had a handful of releases, mostly mm-hmm. older. I don't know if you're still active or have released anything very recent. I mean, I've seen a few things on Discogs. I don't know how recent they are, but you did yeah. a handful of great releases in the like the from '96 to like the early 2000s, but mm-hmm. not many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're very unique. No, I mean, you, and and I was talking to Will Will Van Gorder of um of worth before this, you know, yep. and yep. he, you know, was talking, you know, like he agreed. It's some of the most abrasive noise that exists. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Actually, actually, that's, that's, that's a good in for that because, um, it was a funny thing. This is a funny, this is, this is true. Um, so I guess I started on this when I was 17, 18, really angry young lad, uh, <clears throat> did not knowing so much about the world. Uh, now I'm a less angry old geezer. And I still don't know shit about shit, uh, but I like noise. All right, but um, one, th- one, the, the whole, I guess the whole concept, if there was a concept behind it, was just to try to be as, you know, tr- just just to be fucking harsh, uh, but also not just to be harsh. I wanted it to be, um, I don't know, I, I wanted it to be good in a way, but um, but also un unlistenable mm-hmm. in for. for certain persons so you know so i had this big uh eq box and i just took all the all the basically anything from 500 kilohertz and down you know just filter that right the fuck out so it's just all high end that's it and that was that was that was kind of interesting because i i sent something to um yoshida and he's like yeah this is this is a, it's it's a good recording level. It's it's really you know and it sounds good and you know, and then he released it and he, it was he he you know pumped the bass up and I'm like son of a I'm, I love that guy I love Yoshida forever he's he's actually one of the most awesome humans ever honestly speaking cool. should get that guy on this episode if we can somehow yeah um, but I was like damn this guy just doesn't get it all right well surely Romer will get it. So oh. I did. I, I sent him something similar, and he did the exact same fucking thing. God damn it! Now, honestly speaking, I think that you know, objectively speaking, it sounds much better because you know it, you can listen to it, you know, you can feel it, and all the rest of it. But that was not the fucking point, right? So it's like I, I wanted something that would just, you know, you know, uh, <clears throat> blaze your ear holes off kind of deal. So yeah, yeah. So that was, I guess, that was the. Impetus. I mean, I was, I, my, my gods then and now, and maybe perhaps forever would, would be incapacitants. I, I really liked that, you know, uh, very um, intense, really harsh sound, which is kind of beautiful, really. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wanted to do that. And so, uh, but, but, you know, um, at some point, I guess because I'd been using um, the first stuff I did was just um, it was like a, <clears throat> it was all just feedback uh, based you know with it you know uh, with a blah, blah, blah. just generated by a turntable with uh, you know the the rubber thing pulled off so it was just playing the the metal you know mm-hmm. and just amping that. And splitting that and pumping it up and screaming while at the same time I was, while it was going, that was it. And um, yeah, but at some point, I don't know what happened, but I guess in the late 80s, I, I discovered that you could fuck around with computers and do stuff that sounded really, to me, to me, to me at that time, 
really fucking harsh. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I I, I, I I guess I've mentioned this before, but I just assumed that everyone knew that and everyone was doing that. And I was listening to like 666 volt battery noise and I thought, I think he's doing the same thing. I, later, I decided maybe he's he wasn't. But at that time, I thought possibly he was. I, you know, uh, so I assumed everyone was doing it. Everyone, yeah, everyone. Uh, why not? Fucking computer. We've had computers for like fifty years. You know, why not just use them to make harsh sounds and shit? But apparently, not that many people. But maybe a lot of people were, but just were not releasing it. Or, you know, so it was. I, I, you know, you hear a lot of noise people who will say, well, I was making noise and I didn't realize uh, this noise existed. I was kind of the opposite because I, I guess because I grew up with all this weird ass college radio and stuff, I just assumed everyone was doing this and yeah. everyone knew it existed. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of surprised and that it was much smaller than, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was actually way smaller than I, than I you know, had, had, had. Uh, gathered based on uh, maybe maybe again the way the way that it was presented on college radio as though it was this huge international global extravaganza uh you know by these wonderful yeah. radio djs it just sounded much larger than life uh much much bigger than it was kind of thing so well that's uh, the beautiful thing about those platforms about even having a noise yeah. label or something like that you know mm-hmm. when you discover it you can think wow this yeah. shit is so deep and so underground and so rich and so many people must think it's so cool but then you realize it's a cr limited to 15 and you know yeah. i made it in his mom's yeah mom's living room you know yeah 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 exactly so 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 you like you yeah you were so you were using computers back then and yeah that is a very interesting element of the project because yeah that is something that even to this day in a cert at least in the kind of circles or or flavor of noise and harsh noise that you and i really appreciate and kind of move in that's still very rare and kind of shunned i mean there's still kind of this impression that oh like don't like only analog is real just use the pedals but you were doing something like this that's very very harsh and doesn't sound you know doesn't have these trappings that people like to diss about digital noise you were doing this back in the in the 90s i mean were were the people that you were releasing to and releasing with the audience that you might've had, were they receptive to this? Was there any, were there other yeah. people that you were, cause you did a lot of splits and collabs. I want to talk about that too, but like, was there any yeah. sort of like cooperation? But, with yeah, that? Or were, you, were you just a guy doing the computer stuff? Uh, I guess if I told, I think I didn't really, I might've told some people I was doing, doing stuff with the computer. Um, you know, if people asked, um, but I didn't make a big deal out of the fact that I was using a computer or not. It was mm. just, I just was. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what my question was really. Just, um, you know, how, yeah. was there, what was the exchange around that topic? Oh. What was like the, the, the feedback? What was the, what were the thoughts about it? Was there any sort of like, yeah, I mean, it, like, um, yeah. It, what, one, one very interesting thing is, uh, I guess it was the first, it, I didn't think of it as a demo. I just thought of it as shit that I recorded and just sent to people, uh, you know, who I was in correspondence with, but it was like, uh, it was, I guess I entitled it racial overtones or something like that. Not, not something like that. It was entitled racial overtones. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was about 60 minutes of racial overtones or overtones or undertones or whatever that, what the hell. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so one, one guy received it and he's like, you know, this is, his comment was something like, um, it's unbelievably harsh, even more than uh, the one. Yeah. Harsher than that, but uh, beautifully dynamic with irritation. And I emphasize the word dynamic. And then uh, tension hook, Sam Matheson. I don't know if you know this guy, but he was this Canadian mm-hmm. guy from Lethbridge, Ontario. Uh you should come back to noise, Sam, for fuck's sakes, if you never see this. Um, great guy. <clears throat> um, and he's also like, God damn, that just shows how much I have to do, do in the dynamics department. I was like, yeah, great, great. <laughs> and then, then uh, the, the third person's like, 
total flat line, no dynamics whatsoever. I'm like, okay. So people have different perceptions of what dynamics are, you know? For me, it's like, I don't know, I've always hated the word static, you know, used for incapacitance. Uh, when, for me, it's it, this incredibly dynamic sound. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean static? Are you fucking deaf? Give me a break. Um, but I understand. I understand why you'd say the word static. Um, I understand that. It makes sense to me. And it's just a descriptor, that, you know. Um, but for me, dynamic kind of means within within the sound itself, right? Uh, we're not right. talking about uh, surface movement, say, we're su the subsurface, like, yeah. you know, and you, you get dynamics even in something like the Rita and stuff like that. There, there are dynamics at play there. Mm -hmm. um, they, they just are, or whether uh, they're self self generated as a listener or whatever it's it's going to be. So, mm -hmm. um, so that was one interesting thing was that dynamic thing, what, how people felt about what what does and doesn't constitute dynamic sound or dynamic yeah. noise. So that was one a line. Another another interesting line was. Um, and again, this goes back to that same tape was, uh, so I sent it to Joe Romer again, and he's like, this has a lot of highlights. And uh, so he took the 60 minute thing and then he he cut it down to this 10 minute track they put on to Underground Canada. And it's like, all he did is he he cut in all of the jokes, all of this little, yeah. <laughs> that's not the noise. The noise is, the <laughs> yeah. that's the noise. That's what you're supposed to be listening to. But he cut it down and called that highlights. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting too. That's very interesting that he would he would, he would say that and think that is, you know, I only do the harshest goddamn noise. Dude. And, it, you know, um, calling what I felt was just a kind of funny um, on some level, the, the, the highlights of the track. So, uh, so there's definitely a lot of different perceptions of what constitutes harsh noise and noise and good sound and all the rest of it so uh it was kind of disillusioning in a way that you know nobody nobody agrees with me on this but uh but you know um, at the same time kind of like i don't know self-reinforcing okay i'm right <laughs> yeah as a, as a 17 18 year old angry young guy um you know uh feel differently now obviously um, and it, it's kind of funny, you know, because when you, when you spend so much time, you know, doing shit with computers that you can like recognize, uh, you know, what file type it is based on how it fucking sounds. Okay. That's an executable. And that's a, you know, uh, you, um, and here of course is important. Um, when, um, that, that definitely influenced me and just the fact that, you know, I'm just sick to fucking death of that. And I just don't want to hear stuff that's more like, I don't know, let's say uh, Barstool Mountain or something like that. You know, I mm -hmm. just want to hear that really rugged fucking H-O-H. -H. Am, am I pronouncing that Finnish dude right? You know, like that really broken sludge. Yeah. Um, absolutely the opposite of high pie, high end, mm -hmm. uh, ripping your melt, melting your face off kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm totally different type of harsh noise. And I just, I'm like, damn, that's, that's the shit. That's what I want to get out. Now available at Oxen Records, Incapacitance, Oxen Man's Uneasiness CD, Nobody, Woods and Wires CD, Title Still Available, Dressing, From the Body to the Door CD, Purgist, Heart Sink CD, Scum and Unsustainable Social Condition, Necessary Downfall CD, Leah P, Surviving the Familiar CD, Available at oxenrecords.bigcartel.com. I don't think there was any comment on on the harshness of it. To be honest, there was there were a couple of reviewers that made a couple of comments about you know it, it, yes this is harsh noise um, it's, or it's you know very harsh or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I I mean certainly there was that. I mean I I appreciated that some some persons could get the sense that uh, number one it was harsh. Number two there was an attempt to. Um, uh, not just present just a flat line of harsh. There was there were there were dynamics at play and yeah. and that and that all those little we were uh, you know uh, kind of there as a semi joke so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess. Um, I was thinking about that just this morning, actually, before we talked, and totally unrelated. Yeah. But I was talking about I was thinking about that concept of uh, dynamics. People called harsh noise dynamic or not dynamic, and yeah. I mean, yeah, really, yeah. if you look at it like in a sense of volume dynamics, most of those waveforms are totally brick walled, and you know, a yeah. constant. You realize mm -hmm. actually, you're actually listening to one constant volume the entire time. So this yes. this concept of the dynamics that we think of is 
or that mm-hmm. not we, but that, that music thinks of, or kind of a more technical definition isn't there. But yeah, within it, there's a lot of dynamics. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I fed this to I fed this line to Cipher way back when he did an interview for his his magazine Night Science Cipher Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, how I was, I guess one of the ideas there was you had Pain Jerk who's offering this very uh, fast paced at the surface level. It was very fast, bouncy, jumpy. Uh, I don't know if it was quick edited or if, if he was just, you know, doing crazy ninja stuff. But yeah. in any case, it was it was certainly fast, fast paced at, at the surface, at the surface. And then, then you had incapacitance, which was very, shall we say, half fast paced subsurface. And I mm-hmm. thought that, that would be an interesting, I don't know what I thought. I mean, there was no, there was no thinking involved, but it was just like, you know, this is awesome. And this is awesome. And they're totally different. And somewhere in the middle of that has got to be awesome too. You know? Yeah. Um, so I think that possibly, but I don't know if that influenced the early recordings or that conception came in later on. It's all kind of a blur at this point. Right. Yeah. Uh, pain jerk, incapacitance. Um, I mean, pain jerk came way after incapacitance, right? I mean, so, um, uh, although, you know, I, I guess I would have, been ex- the first incapacitance I would have encountered was probably in the probably 1990 exactly or like yeah um, or it might have been even later mm-hmm. um, you know what probably Where the was first that in the discography I mean what what when did their first LP come out like late 80s? Oh, you know what no no it was it was yeah well yeah they they had yeah but I guess the first one was repo uh, right. technically released in 89 but if it right. had made it anywhere let's say into the into Europe or the States, it was probably 1990 or later. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, no, I've, I I actually told this story on that other uh, podcast, uh, you know, that my, my buddy does Um, just how um, I guess I, at that point, you know, okay. Hopefully if the recording is correct, it caught all this stuff about how there was this shop called hypermedia. Yeah. run by Robert Oliver of Freedom in a Vacuum. Yep. And uh, so I, <clears throat> I'm going to tell the same story, basically. Uh, you know, I, I pick up, you know, one one release after another and say, hey, so what, what is this stuff? Like gum, you know, uh, 40 years in blue mu- movies, or is it 20 years? Fuck, God damn it. And yet to fake an orgasm, right? I'm like, what is that? He's like, well, that's that's power electronics, my friend. I'm like, okay, great. How about this one, Vorbeta Vorbe- Magus? Am I pronouncing that right? German... Uh, I, I didn't, I never thought of that as a German name, but yeah, I think so. That would be, yeah. Um, city in Germany, maybe. Anyway, uh, that's power electronics. Okay. Okay. Power electronics. Yeah. So this is all power electronics, new blockaders, power electronics. Uh Awesome. So all this, all this interesting looking stuff is all power electronics. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, you know, and then I guess Japanese noise was just filtering in the, uh, Tokyo anal dynamite, ghetto, ghetto, gay, gay, gay. Uh, yeah. and he he thought it was the funniest thing. We were just sitting there laughing. Boys, don't cry. What did we go? I can't get no satisfaction. What did we go? <laughs> oh, Tokyo Hill Dynamite. Oh, what did I go? Sorry. My apologies. I promise not to do that. Um, but yeah, I remember just sitting there. We were standing in the shop, laughing our asses off. Um, we thought, it was, and it was just the greatest goddamn thing. Um, but. There, there was also the sense that humor was a major element there. Yeah. Uh, ditto the Hanatarashi, uh, ditto Masana, Violent Onsen Geisha, if you look at the yeah. cover, you know, excrete music, uh, yeah. and, and all that stuff. It was it was great. And actually, excrete music had some pretty heavy-duty, like really harsh, uh, full-on, uh, you know, White House-inspired, you know, uh, you know, shrieky, scorching electronics and stuff like that. Yeah. Good and heavy, heavy duty stuff. Um, but there was, there was a very strong humorous element undeniably running through that. Never mind the whole, you know, my fiance's life work. He died in a motorcycle accident and all that. You know that. And if you don't know, you should look it up because it's important noise history. Okay. Um, where was I? Yeah. And then, 
you know, so I walked into this shop and I, I, at this point, I knew that Alchemy Records was one of the labels for noise. Uh, and it was sitting there and Japanese imports were fucking expensive, like 30 mm -hmm. to $40, yeah. right? Well, Canadian was like like one dollar U.S. No, I'm just joking. It was, it was, it was, actually, it was pretty close, but it was it was, it was damn expensive, right? So you right. so I, I come in and see this incapacitance, and that looks like a, some serious shit, right? Where the fuck is it? Um, excuse my French. Excuse mm -hmm. my French. All right. Well, anyway, pull it up. Feedback of NMS. It yep. looks like some serious stuff. Political, possibly. Um, and I walked into the shop you know, every other weekend and I just didn't buy it because I didn't know what the fuck it was, right? Yeah. It just had these cool titles, FLS syndrome. Okay, FLS syndrome, cursive. I don't know how to pronounce. I, I can't do Kosos Shu. Kosos wow. There's people that are just anyway. Uh anyway, that first track, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um but finally I walked I decided just to buy the damn thing because I'm gonna buy it. it just look it looks so awesome. And just as soon as you hit play it was it was like um the one thing is the genius of Mikawa, which is um, he is absolutely, um, there's a musicality in terms of the intention and the compositional quality and just how well recorded it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's like Vivenza, you know, bringing in, uh, I'm not just recording fucking factory sounds. No, I'm creating a fucking symphony, you know, with yeah. factory sounds, right? It's, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm bringing this, I'm bringing noise for the masses. Here's, mm -hmm. Here it is, folks. Uh, this is this is the music, the beauty of these harsh sounds, and that that is immediately apparent in the first like three seconds of the first track on the feedback of NMS. Like, whoa, holy fucking shit! Yeah. Uh, it's totally absorbing, and I was totally hooked from that point. Definitely in capacitance. Um, yeah. I don't even know what we were talking about, but I just well, so we were when talking I talk about origins of noise. I tend to get into incapacitance a lot. No, so, that's actually that's the, that's almost the exact question that uh, yeah. Eric Nystrand posed a question on the Discord for you. Oh yeah, really? And okay. that was pretty much the exact question. How did you uh, discover incapacitance, and was it love at first here? He asked. So Definitely, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, the very first. Um, inkling that I thought I would like properly harsh noise was definitely not Masana. I thought it was, I didn't like it at first. It just seemed you heard, So you heard, you heard Masana and you, you were familiar with harsh noise and, and stuff like that before hearing incapacitance. We, people called it Japanese noise and, yeah. and, and, and it was not, you know, it was not necessarily looked up to. It was seen as a joke, a lot of it, because of the song titles and the presentation and so on. Yeah. And for, for whatever goddamn reason, at least where I was, in, uh, Hijo Kaiden was not getting distribution in that area for some goddamn reason. Or maybe they were, but maybe I just blipped over it because it was like romance or something. And it was mm -hmm. it, it didn't didn't seem like harsh noise to me. Yeah. You know, if you feel like a beautiful sunset or modern, you know, this, this, this couple on their honeymoon or something, you know, yeah. it's the harshest goddamn thing ever recorded. Yeah. Um, but um, where the hell was I? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So Hedrick Hyden wasn't well distributed. Um, Mertzbau, I'd, Mertzbau I'd heard a lot, but I didn't, don't think I associated that with harsh noise. Like I, um, I, I didn't have, Oh god damn it! What, what's the what's the what's the what's the album on on vanilla? What's that one? Um, you know the the the. I'm I'm blanking. I'm 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 not a yeah. I'm not a historian. Yeah, but everyone knows it. it's the it's the greatest Mersbo. Ah, oh, here we are. Uh, what is it? It's called yes, artificial imagination, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I. But I, I, I hadn't heard that. I was, I was actually um, consciously avoiding Mersbau because he was such a superstar at that, even at that point, right? Okay. Um, I think, or maybe I, I wasn't. I, you know, this is the problem. I, I'm just blurring all these memories together. That's all right. Know, it's like That's all right. But in any case, in any case, um, uh. Oh, I was going somewhere and I've completely forgotten. But, yeah, you're um, talking about kind of like discovering or that earlier stuff as it's being distributed, like kind of how you're perceiving it and the the yeah. switch when you heard incapacitance. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's difficult to say because a lot of 
a lot of things happened at the same time. You know, uh, I was I was youngish and I was I had a lot of fucking free time and mm-hmm. could you know not that much cash, but I had time on my hands and uh, could devote a lot of it to this to noise and stuff and discover all kinds of crazy shit. So um, yeah. Um, uh, for, so for, for whatever reason, um, I, definitely I had been familiar with Mersbau, and one of the first things I bought on records was Porn Noise, which, mm-hmm. again, I, I probably need to go back and listen to that, but that did not strike me at that time as a harsh noise thing. It sounded like, um, I don't know, I guess closer to what we'd probably now call like heavy electronics, or maybe, maybe even power electronics, mm-hmm. right? Um, I need, probably need to go back and hear that and completely disagree with myself. Mm-hmm. But anyway, at that time. So, um, oh, now I know where I was going. I was going to talk about the new block haters. That was it. So there was that album. And again, you are in Germany, so please help me. Orenschrauben. Orenschrauben means like screwing the ears. Yeah, there were two of them, right? Yeah. Uh, and then they were combined onto one double CD, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the first track on the album was uh, My Cock's on Fire. Uh, long, I, I always remember it as Long Hard Version. Maybe there is a, one called Long Hard Version, but apparently it was not. Um, and it's it's pretty good, but it's kind of like ambient. And then he, it, it's, it's almost comedy, like this, you know, finding out later that he was doing like, you know, assertive his training. You know, can I see him? This this poor, poor little guy that doesn't want to get going. He's on fire, ready for action. Yeah. Yeah. on fire yeah. even at the very end it's on fire. It's on fire. like he's like trying to persuade it to be on fire but it's just not going to happen and the, the sound itself is kind of this, these kind of limp waves that are kind of flapping along, flopping along right it's, it's sure. very it's very comedic in its way uh and it was an interesting track you know that you had you know hnas and nurse with wound and Kerr 93 and uh, all the, all those and i think toll was on that as well toll mm-hmm. which is an amazing band Amazing project, one of my favorites. Um, and uh, I mean, th- they were all great, but I'd heard a lot of that stuff. Flip it over, and then there's this untitled track by New Blockaders. It's just like two minutes, and it's just mm-hmm. this dense industrial, uh, you know, it's, it's a perfection. It turns out that that was maybe on their very first uh, album, you know, mm-hmm. it was the first track of their first album that was ever released by the new blockaders and um anyway that was that was kind of that that is what i wanted to hear i wanted that i didn't want to hear noise like masana kind of noise i didn't want to hear get getting gay kind of noise i wanted to hear the stuff that had this incredibly rich density and depth and hints of harsh hints of harsh but it, it really mm-hmm. sounded very Again, it was it was musical in its way um, to my ear, maybe to anyone's ear. Um, yeah. So to make a jump from that short little two minute new blockaders to incapacitance is mm-hmm. is actually really obvious, you yeah. know, in a way. That that you know feedback of uh, uh, feedback of NMS NMS has that uh, the density those hints of infinite depths, you know, mm-hmm. that seem to suck you in. But it's also really motherfucking harsh. That's mm-hmm. the one thing that, that you can distinguish. Um, uh, you know, that that first incapa- that, that Incapacitance album from uh, the New Blockaders. And I, and I, <clears throat> you know, there are other New Blockaders albums that are much harsher, uh, sure. but, but I hadn't heard that yet. So, um, Anyway, there's my long, boring answer to that one question. Yeah. Okay. So you, I mean, you also, going back to your writing now a little bit, you've also talked, yeah. it, at some point you, you wrote like a, a a description kind of system for Harsh Noise. Oh, and I, yeah, yeah. And I, I think you called it the Science of Noise Part 1 or something like that. Like these kind of categories of, of Harsh Noise and... And it's very interesting. Two. Harshness, density, rawness, craftsmanship, spasticity, harmonicaness are the kind of that's right. the different yeah. characteristics you give. But why is it yeah. important to you to differentiate harsh noise from noise? Do you think that is still important today? And 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 how do you see that um, different from? You kind of talked about it a bit, well, but harsh noise well, versus noise versus industrial versus 
Well, no, I mean, I, I think I just, uh, e from then and possibly even going into now, uh, I just thought of it all as industrial. So what, what we call noise, is, and that's industrial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, so, you know, keep industrial out of harsh noise, but it's mm -hmm. not just fucking skinny puppy. It's fucking, you know, right. e block haters is industrial, and more is industrial, and fucking right. MERS about most of it, the real MERS stuff, like from the fucking, you know, from the days of <clears throat> string and percussion and loop and collage mm -hmm. that's, that's fucking industrial man that's what yeah. fucking industrial is. so i mean yeah fine we can keep it out of harsh noise sure um so i don't so for me harsh noise equals noise noise means harsh noise yeah like whatever so yeah um yeah uh that whole i think the inspiration for that was probably franz de ward just you know every single review that he was writing was sounds like mersbow sounds like mersbow oh that's so that's great but it's not something that mersbow hasn't done a million times before yeah. so and i was listening to that thinking it does not at all sound like fucking mersbow nobody wants to sound like mersbow nobody can nobody wants to why would anyone try to sound like fucking mersbow yeah. um you know mersbow is what he does is fucking amazing and uh what other people are doing is is it's, it's amazing too but it's not doesn't sound like mers about him hey yeah um so let's figure out why it doesn't sound like mers pal uh and it's not something that mers has done a million times and maybe you know maybe if i re-listen to poor noise i'll decide okay maybe it sounds like mers but okay um you know so it was kind of it was basically a response to that okay you know it was just my response you know i i didn't frame it like that the Science of Noise Volume uh, Part 1 was actually a survey that I wrote and just asked people to describe noise in, I forget, so many words. And there were, there were a reasonable number of replies to that. And if you, I'm not sure, the, the original blog post might be offline, so I might need it. But you can probably find that on Alt Noise if you, if you can find the Alt Noise news groups. And if you just look for um, uh, maybe Science of Noise or something, you might be able to find it. And I should, I should probably try to find it. Anyways, um, but I there find were a lot it. of I, dug, I, I found it on the, on the special interest board. I dug back and found oh. it. So okay, I do good, have good, it here, good. copy paste it. I, I did repost it on the Discord recently. And okay. Uh, okay, yeah. so it, we'll yeah. circulate that. So it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a cool thing that to do. I mean, I think it's good, well, well, do, good to do, break do, it down. Do I don't know if it really is true 100%, but it's definitely a, a oh. great thing to. Oh. Well, the whole thing is it's what, what's true. I mean, I. You know, e even as a relatively young person at that time, I was I was aware of the irony there, and I believe yeah. even then I did refer to the fact that it, this is my rating system, and, and please create your own because yeah. you know everyone's got their own system, right? If if they want to, you don't yeah. have to have a system, but you can if you want. Yeah. Um, I don't know. One one thing I found interesting is the people that were more receptive to, to that were non-native speakers and i can kind of understand that right that's a that's a language that you can understand when it's just like okay here are some words that we can kind of break down and just just put a number on that and okay this is more the drone side of it and this is more dense and this is kind of harsh but doesn't seem to have a lot of uh the the the, the, the one that i really never never liked was the idea of creativity which is just a fucking stupid thing to rate i honestly mm -hmm. think that's fucking ridiculous and the other the others you can you can you can you can piss around about you know you can disagree about all you want and you know i think arguments for and against are fine uh, on what constitutes harshness density rawness and all the rest of it i think har loss. the coolest one is harmonica -ness. <laughs> yeah yeah well that was that was this thing where you know tim from stimbox is like i'm not ambient i'm like yes you are this is ambient noise no it's not it's not ambient noise god damn it it's not ambient uh, but i'm like tim it's, it's ambient but um but it's really fucking good like you know it's, those, it's the same way ccc is, is fucking ambient right it's cosmic it's it's a coincidence maybe but there's a control center going on and this is fucking it's it's ambient harsh beauty Okay, and, okay. maybe you don't want it to be called ambient, but uh, it's, it's, it's good. And that's, so harmonicumness is kind of, you know, Stimbox is harmonic, this kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of really harsh stuff too as well. Um, For sure. That was definitely, there was nothing ambient about it whatsoever. It was just, you know, but louder, um, you know. So, um, I mean, you know, when it comes to the rating systems, I mean, if people ask me, how would you describe noise? It's like this, but louder, that's it, you know, but louder. Um, you yeah. know, so... I think I, I actually pulled that off Kenny. Kenny Kenny's favorite joke was that. He's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You go to any hardcore band and you listen to their album and it's just like, you know, this nicely recorded music. And then you go to their live show and it's just... Yeah. And I'm like, 
Yeah, that's that's good. I like that, King. That's really good. I'm going to use that. So I've used that a lot. But yeah. So yeah, Raspberry Amplified. Um, so but we're, so gonna, we're, gonna, we're jumping around a lot here, but let's go back a little bit to yeah. your project to assistant okay. deputy ministers. Sure. Why why has there been so relatively little material? Uh, just I'm lazy. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I I kind of I'm just I see myself as a listener for first and foremost, uh, and I just want to experience noise and enjoy the noise. And um, for for a sense of that, think about this: sickness comes to Japan, and it was his sick sayonara. <clears throat> sayonara to Japan, says he, although he came back later, but at that time he felt it might be his last time. So we put together a show, and, we call, and I called it um, Fuck Off Sickness, Bye Bye Noise Music. Did you get that reference, right? Violence and right? All right. All right. Um, I know, there's, a, there's, there's a whole other bunch of stuff that I'm absolutely not going to talk about it to do with that, but... Um, yeah. Why? Uh, Oh no! Anyway, sorry. Yeah, but but what 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 happened is so we we got on. A, it was an awesome lineup. We had uh, Astro Black, which was Astro plus this this woman named Renka Renka. This is awesome. Um, Killer Bug for his mm -hmm. his revenge after uh, he he'd come back already, mm -hmm. but he was coming back stronger. Mm -hmm. um, and some other ass wipes. Um, and uh, Gomikawa Fumio. Gomikawa Fumio. And, you know, at the beginning of the set, I suddenly realized, holy shit, Gudro's up there. So this is Go Mikawa Fumio fucking Gudro. How fucking awesome is that? And then at some point, Chris is just like, you know, fuck this. I want to enjoy this. And he just exits the stage. And he, he, he's, he's like standing, you know, near me or beside me going, yeah, fucking yeah, Go Mikawa Fumio. Because he just wants to enjoy the show. I think that yeah. that's part of it, you know, just wanting to absorb the noise as opposed to make the noise mm -hmm. as, as a listener and as a fan. And also just lack of confidence in my, what I'm doing and uh, just, I don't know, kind of constantly going back and forth. Do I want to continue with this computer crap or not? Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, when Endo went into the laptop stuff, it seemed interesting at first. And then it kind of got to the point where it was like, you know, and Kenny's, so, yeah, we got to get him back to that killer bug. Sort of, yeah. Um, it was interesting. It was interesting stuff, you know. Um, but I still felt that his killer bug stuff was, um, yeah. And he, and of course, he's eventually gone back to that to an extent. Right. Um, I don't know. I so I, I I've kind of breathed hot and cold on this whole idea of the computers and digital sound and just my own tastes shifting towards more acoustic stuff. And here's a funny thing. I probably performed more in Japan just straight acoustic sets than with the fucking computers. Like, um, just for whatever reason. Like, when I first arrived in Japan, the computers were busted, so I had to send them into the manufacturer to get them mm -hmm. fixed. And then I just had to come up with some other shit. So it was just straight acoustics, no amplification, just acoustic stuff. Really? Uh, so, and, I, and I enjoyed that a lot. And actually, <laughs> so like, like there's, there's one show where I, I think I actually just showed up with this idea that I was going to kind of crash Endo's gig. Uh, I wasn't on the lineup and, or maybe I was, I forget, but I didn't, maybe I, or maybe I had been invited, but I couldn't do it or whatever. I don't know. Because I didn't have my shit. Um, mm -hmm. I just showed up with a piece of styrofoam and I just played a chair. <laughs> it was, it was fucking, it was, it was good fun, you know? And then, you know, not long after that, Hey, are you like an artist? I'm like, yeah that's me artist check me out maybe so i'm like all right so maybe this this you know doing this straight acoustic arty stuff you know even if i've still got my don't even have to lop off in here i can be an artist now uh so i don't know i think all of these elements uh contributed to kind of putting a pause on the project but i but but it, it, it continues it continues uh in spirit yeah and uh i i have spent the better part of a year on one really crappy song that just sounds terrible, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, but we'll be released. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What about plans for, what about plans for reissues or re-releasing? Cause I mean, a lot of that stuff that is, has been released is still very hard to come by. I mean, the splits and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Well, I, I think I think I'm I'm permitted to to say that. Um, uh, actually, just received word from uh, Mr. Van Gorder that he says uh, we're going to run with it now, right now. I want to do it now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. I don't know if you, some person contacted him about that or something, but uh, in any <laughs> case, uh, yeah. Um, I'm like, okay. So, and he he even said like, I announced it. So okay, cool. You announced it. Awesome. He did announce it. Uh, when I, I asked you about it, I asked you about it. You were like, I don't know if it's f- for sure because I yeah. I, I didn't. I he thought, said he announced it a week ago, but I, is there a is there a is there like a prose naggy? Uh, is, I, how do you pronounce that pro, that prose nag? I think prose nag. Yeah. Is is there an email list or something? I, I, if so, I need to get on that. I don't think so. You know what? I think it's another one of those things where it's pretty much solely Instagram. Okay. Okay. So in, I, I so, think I saw a little. I think I saw a little flyer on Instagram, like upcoming releases, and it was like two assistant okay. deputy ministers oh, okay. box set, okay. and oh, I don't know how it was yes. described, but it was something like a. It was something described like a big, big set of your stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. So that will be. I mean, I guess it's coming out <clears throat> soonish. I don't know. What's so, it going to be? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's a retrospective. So it's all stuff that's been released plus one little stupid track that's been irritating the hell out of me that I've been blowing my ears out trying to put together, uh, just like a 15 minute track, but, but the rest of the stuff is all like stuff that's been released ages ago. Uh, but a lot of it is unreleased and, or, um, yeah, the unedited versions of some things. And a lot of them are much shorter, um, and better in my opinion, in my opinion, better, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, found, <clears throat> you know, found some old, a lot of the stuff, um, you know, I don't have the original masters for. So it's like, and I don't have any, I'm not like Grant Richardson. I don't have any mastering skills, but I did my best um, to, you know, try to make it at least listenable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. So uh, is so, it going to so, be some of the material that originally got remixed and remastered by certain labels like you were talking about? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, but like, like for example, like the Romer track, uh, the, the, the track that Romer did will be there, but also the original Racial Overtones, which was released by Sewage, actually. Sewage uh-huh. released that on Freckle. Um, yeah. So, for example, um, and other comp tracks from the same sessions kind of deal and other material in that period will mm-hmm. be released. It's, it's, it's four discs. Um Killer. And yeah, modeled after I guess the um, a thousand orchestra release song Hiroshima or something like that. Um, that that's the, that was the inspiration maybe for the packaging concept, apparently. All right. All right. Cool. Anyway. So yeah, so it'll should be should be good in it, you know, if if you like that kind of shit. I don't know if anyone actually likes it, but you know, it, it'll be um some of it is 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 uh, is, uh, is probably good and others I don't know. Take, take or leave it, but yeah, it, it'll, it'll all be there. That's great news. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Tell me about some of your collaborations, because you've, like I said, you've collaborated quite a bit with with a lot of also very prominent and cult noise artists, a lot of Japanese artists. I mean, you've you've collaborated with Crack Steel. That was a split. Sorry, that was a split. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I guess I've done like live sets with people. You know, okay. like with with Endo and Mote and stuff like that. Um, no, and of course, Kenny, a fair few times. Um, I haven't done so many live sessions actually, even then. Um, but I guess the only collabs that have been released were uh, stuff with um, Crack Fierce and um, okay, excuse me, yeah, and the Government Alpha, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, there's there was <clears throat> there was one track that was it was kind of a collab track between Incapacitance and you know my project that actually that that wasn't the track. It was I don't know what happened. Something weird happened in the in the digital transfer in those early days of issues with I don't know. You know, I just computers. Are you talking about on the CD on on self abuse? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, this is the, <clears throat> there's one called like uh, two assistant deputy Mikawa. Uh, but that was just, yeah, that was just an error. <laughs> so that, so that's not a collaboration. That, that was a computer error. Yeah. Complete computer glitch and should never have sounded like that. And yeah. Um, and what was so funny is, the is, track is, itself one, is an, the track itself is a glitch. 
Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was just, I, I don't know how that happened. But it, what I did is I took all my favorite incapacitance tracks, uh-huh. mixed them all together, and front loaded those, and then it came out on my own project kind of deal. And it t- sounded absolutely nothing like that. Like the, the thing that I did, I think at the time I thought it sounded like a, you know, a semi collab, but this, you know, what, what that was, was just some weird fuck up. I don't know. Okay. What well, I need to revisit oh. that then, but that's not, I mean, I, I, I did, I did, yeah. I did listen to that the other day and I now with that information I need to. I do remember <laughs> that there's this Japanese dude. He was like the, the famous noise photographer at the time. He's like, yeah, that's the best song ever. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, yeah. Great. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that was that was literally uh, just a mistake, but, yeah, but okay. it, was, it, it was funny at the time. I thought so. Why not? <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah. What's your relationship like, and has been like with with people like Crack Fierce? Yeah, um, I sometimes wonder if I'm the reason that he quit. Um, he, <laughs> I don't know. There was one day he he was actually the. He was the best best guy ever. Uh, we were in regular correspondence. Um, and when I first moved to Japan, uh, you know, he picked me up from the Gaijin house that I was staying and took me into Tokyo. And we, we visited JNR Records and shit and hung out and got drunk and shit. That uh, was great. And went to see his shows. And he did this set that was really serious and quiet. And at the end of it, I, I, I was just joking. At least I, I felt I was joking. I'm like, what are you doing? This is in harsh noise. And I was holding a chair above his head. Like, I'll kill you. And I, I thought it was funny, but I was told by, uh, I believe Koji Tano later, he took that quite seriously. I was like, Oh shit. And it, I, I, I think there's a lot of dumb ass fucking stupid shit that I've done in my time that might've been taken more seriously than it had been intended. Uh, so I don't know, um, but I, I, I did have the opportunity to, to reconnect with Crack Fierce and I met him at some, some gigs and he was once again, the maniac going insane, jumping on, jumping on people and sh- shouting at incapacitants. Uh, he was. So I, yeah, he was. So he came okay. back. Um, and I thought Crack Fierce was back, but then I guess he found another hobby. I think he likes, yeah, he's found, he's found other hobbies. So he seems he's no longer into into that. Uh, yeah, and he's not interested in anything being reissued or. or... Yeah, he's he he. <clears throat> yeah, I think he honestly speaking, like when we did this thing, uh, the CFAT it was called CFAT, the Canine Fornication Association of Tokyo, mm-hmm. uh, and he did it, and apparently someone got it. Um, I don't know who, but I never got a copy, so. I just assumed it never was released, but apparently one or two people actually had it. Um, and, um, and he sent me this weird message. Like, I want you to remix my track. So it sounds more like yours. And I was like, what are you talking about? I, I thought his shit was way better than mine. And he was like, he seemed to like, not like what he was doing. I'm like, what? And I don't know. He, he, he had, he had all these kind of self denigrating comments, to be honest, like, yeah, mm-hmm. third organ, there's already people doing way better noise. What's the point of me doing it? You can listen to Endo or Third Organ or whatever. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Your fucking your shit is fucking amazing. What are you talking about? Release more, do more. Damn it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean, so it, it seems that he felt that he didn't have enough of value to contribute anymore, or maybe he just lost interest. I don't know. I mean, you know, what you say and what you think are very different things, but sure. It does. It does seem that crack fierce is going to be a difficult nut to crack as far as you know getting getting more, uh, getting getting him back into the scene or possibly even reissuing anything. Interesting. Um, and fair enough. Fair enough. If if if, if he's done with it, fine. That's sure. cool. You know, don't you know, people move on. That's fine. Right. So. Hmm. Um. What about but, working with Fumiyuki Nagura from Mote? Yeah. I, yeah, I've never actually done any um, recorded collaborations. We played live once, you know, mm-hmm. my, and my gear was just totally acting up. Um, so, yeah. Um, but he he was great. Um, <clears throat> when I first met him at some noise show organized by probably Kenny, and he, this guy is looking at me and he's like, I am Fumiyuki. I am crazy. Like, he awesome. says that? Yeah, best guy. 
Um, yeah, so he's, I, he's, I don't know, I, I really, really like the guy. He's, he's a great guy. Um, we never actually discussed doing anything. Um, so uh, just did that one, one session once. And then not long after that, he kind of uh, took a long extended hiatus from noise mm -hmm. and finally returned um, some years later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, it was so awesome to see Mote come back. Uh, after That's all these fun. years of going on and on and on about how, um, you know, <clears throat> life in a peaceful new world is the best noise release ever. And having then suddenly these people say, yeah, Mote is great. I'm like, really? No, other people think so too. Like, <laughs> I, I felt like I was like in my own little miniature echo chamber talking about how awesome Mote is for years. And now suddenly... People agree. Good. You should agree. Mote is fucking awesome. Thank you. Fuck. Maybe maybe everyone did always agree, but just didn't feel it necessary to express it because I was just so vocal about how awesome Mote was. Okay, he's he, he's the Mote pumper, so he can do that. We'll 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 promote other guys. I think a lot of people but, just didn't have a chance to hear a lot of it. I mean, people from your generation, no, no, that's, that's, perhaps. But I mean, that's absolutely. Yeah, that's part of it. That's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, yeah. It's it's one of those things when people say like underrated artist it's it's just you just didn't hear it you just didn't get a, get a chance to hear it right yeah it, it's a funny thing because I was like for example worth um, is it Oculus mm -hmm. Oculus right remember it had a the first issue of that was like a super ultra limited thing right mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah yeah I think so it was a tape set yeah and then and oh well, shit I missed out on another worth how well so Shogunai uh, Shogunai sorry it's no ginger too bad. That's life. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then the, the CD came out and I felt like, was, was anyone talking about that? Cause I thought that was a super awesome fucking disc. It was like mm -hmm. really diverse, uh, demonstrating the man at full powers and, uh, bringing in different kinds of sounds that I hadn't necessarily heard him working with before necessarily. Although again, I missed out on a lot of worth, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know doing all kinds of stuff, but I thought that release was awesome and nobody, didn't hear anyone, at least in my mind, didn't notice so much said about it. But but again, maybe I'm in the wrong forums or the wrong groups, and maybe there's this, you know, Oculus worth worshiping cult somewhere out there. But yeah. anyway, so it's, it's just interesting what people say flies under the radar when it's uh, when yeah, it's, when it's uh, or underrated. That is when it's just not actually having a chance to hear it. So. I, well, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, but that's like for worth example. For example, it's interesting because I don't think he's that underrated in any way because his stuff is very oh, well appreciated no. and received. I mean, it sells out very. Yeah. I mean, it sells really well and people love it and do, people do talk about. it. But I mean, I think there's a there's there's some sort of disconnect in the in the scene in general between like buying stuff and like yeah. maybe talking about it, posting or, about it on Instagram or something like that yeah. or whatever, and then actually talking yeah. about it or, or or breaking it down or or analyzing maybe, maybe it or reviewing not. it. I mean, that's that doesn't happen that much. Maybe I'm I'm just not on Instagram. Maybe there's a whole shitload of comments flying around all over about shit on Instagram, but I I just don't use it. It's don't not know really. It. It's more I, like photos. Like someone will post a photo and then like yeah. someone. Else I, I only got on out. Instagram for one reason. It was because Opera Pot was doing updates only on Instagram at that time. I'm like, fuck! I gotta get yeah. the next Opera Pot. Fuck! Fuck! Yeah. Fuck! Because everything yeah. I was doing was fucking awesome. It was like yeah. holy sh Jesus moly fucking god! This guy's the best. Um, so I just. That was the only reason to join Instagram. That was the the one reason. The one, one. Wow. Yeah, and then yeah, and and once once he got into you know other updating in other capacities, I'm like ah fuck Instagram, I don't need it anymore. So yeah, yeah, but maybe maybe I'm missing out on all, all kinds of stuff. But you know, it's like whatever. It yeah. is kind of it is whatever. I mean, I think that you have to accept that. But the fact is, you are missing out on it. Uh, on lots of stuff because a lot of stuff really gets only posted there, and a lot of times in a, in a in a in a they have these posts that only last 24 hours. So a lot of people just do their <laughs> posts or their release on this little thing yeah. and, it, and it's there for 24 hours and it's gone. And that's kind of the, oh, well, I'm, I'm, the I miss out on shows that's, that's released on your distro because just because I think it gets posted at 11 PM my time. And by then I'm in a few in, into a few of these. So I wake up the next day and it's 12 hours later and, you know, sure enough, that that one guy or three people that like exactly the same shit that I did have picked up exactly the same shit that I wanted. Uh, sure enough, every time, every single time, I'm like shocked. Yeah. There, there must be someone who's like the has the same brain as I do, or something. So enjoy his brain. Or there are several no. people actually. It's a lot. Point, There's a lot of people. That's more. You know, I'm, it's usually more than three. It's yeah. usually 
yeah quite a, quite a handful but yeah some of the stuff does, yeah, it does yeah, quite I quick i don't know i try to try I, that's that's yeah. what i try to avoid but it's hard to but hit every time zone yeah. But an argument could be made for, you know, there is there is a generally accepted aesthetic for noise, given that fact, that fact mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it just seems that, you know, the items that I would have gone straight for, beelined for, are the ones that are always gone, and everyone knows that. So it's, I, you know, there, there must be, on some level, even if it's not necessarily always stated, uh, there's some kind of hive mind going on there, yeah. buzzing Absolutely. around. Um, I think people sense good good stuff. I mean, I think people do sense good stuff. I mean, some people, there are people out there who have good taste and they're attracted to the same stuff, even if it's obscure and not super popular. But there's that, you know, there's that stuff where I'm like, oh, this is the shit. And it's going to be people like Saudi or people, you know, people are the right. There's a certain type of person that's going to be gravitating towards this and they'll be right, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That's how it is. It's. I, uh, but on the other hand, I, I kind of think that's that's really awesome. I'm like, okay, I, I missed out on this, but that's that's cool. I'll, yeah, there's a good chance it'll be reissued if it's that popular, or I'll, you know, I'm I'm, I'm never in a hurry because I've got this massive stack of to listen to items. Yeah. Then it's just like, you know, when I when I pass on, I'll just have this massive stack. You know, and, yeah. he never listened to this on, on the headstone. He never listened to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, well, that's um, cool. I mean, it's it's so awesome that there's so much awesomeness. Uh, it it's it, it boggles the mind at this point. Really anyway. uh, Taylor also asked on the Discord. Taylor Gettys of Scream and Rise. Um, yes. He asked a fellow Canadian. My question for Saudi yeah. is if he played with Merzbau in the late 90s in Ontario, and if that was the first time Merzbau had come to Canada. Also, if he saw any notable neural gigs in the 90s. Yeah, I did see Neural because Neural came to Toronto. That was that was an awesome. That was the most awesome thing that ever happened. Um, yeah, Neural coming to Toronto. Uh, you know, here's the funniest thing. Okay, and this this kind of says it all, really. So, I was I was in correspondence with Joe Romer, uh, you know, Mother Savage, Magnifa, and he's like, "Oh, you're from Canada. Do you know uh, Alan?" Mm-hmm. I'm like. Fuck. That's like a, that's like that's like a classic joke, you know. It's like I always tell students, I you know, in Japan, I'm like, oh yeah, you're from Japan. Do you know Toshi? He's from <laughs> Japan. It's like it's like I'm, because at that time, even then, because that was the earliest correspondence with Romer, I didn't realize how goddamn small noise was, right? Yeah. So shortly after that correspondence, not so long after, Neural left Montreal. At which point, the harsh noise scene ceased to exist, as far as I can see. Yeah. Uh, it moved to Toronto. <laughs> the whole harsh noise scene, aka Alan Bloor, that yeah. was it. He moved from Toronto. Uh, so sorry, in Montreal, you've lost your harsh noise scene. He's here now. Ha ha ha! Of course, he moved back. But um, <clears throat> uh, you know, there's there, like I said, there there are a lot of people making noise all over the place, but maybe they weren't necessarily publishing or well known, doing their little bedroom projects. Um, yeah, but but yeah. So and Neural was the most amazing thing um, to see because he, he would, every time he played, he'd make these insane sculptures, right? These crazy, yeah. like look dangerous, like even to pick up or even approach, like you wouldn't even want to get near that sculpture and he'd just be playing it. And, you know, uh, Alan Bluer, this kind of uh, Adonis like figure uh, surrounded by, um, lovely persons giggling and uh he was he was kind of a superstar actually in, in, in his own way right yeah. um and and the intensity that he brought to it the the intensity and the focus um he was always doing something different always something new it felt like true experimentation like he did it he did this one uh event um i think it was generally centered around if you know monty kansen who is one of those um self-proclaimed leader of the Lower East Side. But I think Monty Kansen is actually uh, one of those generic names that anyone is allowed to take. Mm-hmm. But was picked up by a particular guy in Toronto for a time. And uh, he kind of did these kind of somewhere between haters and new block haters sets. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's, so there's this outdoor show done in this in the middle of downtown Toronto, this uh, unused land 
uh, that was so expensive that nobody could buy it. They finally bought it now and developed it, unfortunately. Mm. <clears throat> and it was it was basically put on by anarchists, which means like 15 year old runaways and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and Neural shows up for that too, you know, and he's got this, you know, like, I don't know, 12 meters, 15 meters of chain link fence and just taking these contact mic, he's taking these big boulders and just hurling them at it. <laughs> At the South Shore, I'm like, fuck, everything this guy does is fucking awesome. Wow. Um, yeah, so Neural was, world was, is, and will be awesome. Um, yeah. Um, what else to say about Neural? Yeah. So I, <clears throat> and I, yeah, I remember when um, the Nihilist Spasm Band, they did, um, they, they organized uh, the No Music Festival in London, Ontario, right? Um, brought in Hijo Kaiden, you know. And I'm like, okay, this is the No Music Festival. You're bringing in all these luminaries. Um, fucking get Neural on the bill. So I contacted, uh, yeah, the Nihilus Spasm Band. I'm like, yeah, you got you guys got to get Neural on there. Fuck you, the Neural. You have to have Neural. And yeah. I, I must have been really passionate about it. So they they put Neural on the bill, and uh, yeah, um, and he tore shit up uh, yeah. totally. Yeah, and then ended up doing a project with. Um, not Bill Exley, but the other gentleman, uh, Pratavarius mm -hmm. on the violin, or that weird violin like thing. They, they did like a whole, they toured together for a while. Mm. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and one other funny thing about Neural was quite often when he played in Toronto, there was this guy, Corpus, that would play. This uh, kind of big, big dude. He'd show up and he's got his hair slicked back, wearing. Uh, you know, hockey knee pads, and you're wondering why is that? Mm -hmm. um, and then he, he had this, uh, his backup band was this guy on this tiny little cheap Casio keyboard going, ding, 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 ding. and he's like, I want to fuck Goldie Hawn's shoes. And he, he just got so passionate and worked up, and he's like sweating and going insane. I'm like, this, so I, I, I connected these two together. Like every time Neural is on, you get Corpus, this insane guy. He even had fans, you know, who were, were like, they buddies? Were they, were, they, were they coming together? No, I don't think so. It just, um, maybe there were not so many gigs that would just run yeah. with these kind of, you know, kind of fucked up music kind of thing. So yeah. it's like when fucked up music came to town, uh, these are the guys who you got on the bill. Um, and then this Corpus guy had fans. So like, yeah, I want to fuck Holding On Sears, did song, yeah. Um, <clears throat> no one ever shouted requests for Neural because he didn't maybe didn't have any. But, but then lyrics. like, yeah, exactly. Maybe this fucking Kochi Tano dude, he gets it. He gets what harsh noise is because there were a lot of arguments about what is and is not harsh noise, right? Yeah. So that was interesting. You know, it was, it was interesting because at, at the time later on, there'd be these arguments online about what constitutes harsh noise. And I was like, well, you know who knows what harsh noise is? It's my It's my partner at the time. She knew exactly what it was. It was the shit that she refused to abide, even if I were in the next room with the door closed and my headphones playing. She's like, I can't even fucking be that far away from me. This shit's fucking insane. I'm like, yeah. But but every time I was listening to that, that's what I considered harsh noise. This shit that she's like, ah. yeah, right. And there were all these arguments online. It's like, fucking listen to this person who like likes J-pop, right? Like, you know, they're if. if if you know, you know, right? It's if, if you yeah. if you hear enough of this harsh shit, you know what the harsh shit is. Sorry, just can you ramble. can you can like, you define it? To, what's your definition of it? I know I know you've written about it and all that stuff, but can, what, what's the definition in your mind in, in, in a couple sentences? <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ! Um, <clears throat> yeah, you see, but this is the thing. Like I, like I used to be pretty adamant about what what constituted the harsh noise, but now I don't know. Um, you know. Because as I said, I kind of came around to Romer's idea of you need to feel it in your gut. So I'm like, okay, you know what? That that has merit. Uh, I came around to, uh, you know, Sam the Rita's idea about what constitutes harsh noise. That has merit. So I mean, I my conception of what constitutes harsh noise uh, evolved a lot and changed a lot from those points when I just felt uh that it just needs to be something that uh the intent to be unlistenably brutal is paramount uh whereas i at this point i can't say that anymore right the intent is not does uh, when i say the intent that comes through in the sound itself um but i don't know um you know so in a sentence um i once posted this thing about 
a willingness or uh, the possibility of doing damage <laughs> might, might constitute that, whether it's damage to ears, equipment, relationships, neighbors, relationships, whatever. Um, that kind of focus mania on a on a you know on a on the brutality of the sound um but i don't know i don't know i i think it's almost silly to to uh go off on the topic at this point i mean i but i do appreciate you know you know someone asking me this saudi character what he what he thinks about that um but i just i'm at the point where i i cannot I can only give a really convoluted answer that mm -hmm. doesn't answer anything. Um, but still, at some level, um, I don't know, because it, this actually, this this came to this this was one of those things that uh, came when I was a young lad, uh, when a particular radio DJ in Toronto was asked to talk about what it was that attracted people to these harsh sounds. And he's like, well, it's specifically, it's, it's irritating. It catches the ear. That's what it is. The fact that it's catching your ear in a way, uh, maybe it's in a way that's off-putting, but it's still, there's, there's, there's a reaction there. It's a, there's a visceral reaction on some level, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, it's, uh, it's re received as pleasurable or not. Uh, it, it it catches the point is that it catches the ear right yeah. so that's harsh yeah you know? mm -hmm. um, so I don't know you know when 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 I um, I, I ceased doing noise for a while uh, when I um, my second and third kid popped out at the same time I had these twins right oh, wow so I pick I, you know so one kid starts crying and screaming so I've got him holding here. Yeah. You know, so his the kid's head basically has two ways it can go, go that way or yeah. this way. And for whatever reason, I always like to go this way. <laughs> Continuously. And then, of course, it would wake up the other guy. So now I've got the other guy. And now in stereo. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't making any noise, but every fucking day was harsh fucking noise. Let me tell you, fucking hell. <laughs> you know, like for hours on end. <laughs> you know, that's... The, so these things were, were you able weird. to find any appreciation in that or or listen to that in sort of any any sort of way that you drew no i just wanted it like? to stop i just wanted to please make it stop you know so i mean you know but again part of that is it's part of the emotional response to that like you you know you don't want you know say your own kids or whatever to be in distress uh that's harsh that yeah. concept alone is harsh so i mean uh so yeah that's perhaps that's why I have a difficulty in answering your question because the, mm -hmm. the definition is so variable based on like, the context. So, yeah. no, so maybe the most pat boring answer is context is everything. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, I still, I still go back to this and I, I used, it used to be a little hobby of mine. I'd go back to the latest noise and I'd listen to it. And I, I I put it against my my faves so like um, incapacitance FLS syndrome uh, incapacitance uh, no risk no return mm -hmm. and, you know and I, so I, I I take these and I put it against this other harsh stuff and I'd be listening to them back to back at increasingly high volume levels and I'm like yep mm -hmm. incapacitance still wins my ears are fucking destroyed. Thank you very much. You are still the champions. And so I would do this. I would do this kind of ranking, and I was obsessed with that. I would spend hours just blowing out my ear holes. So I, I don't know. I, this um, sonically speaking, the the, the intense, unending pressure. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a flat line, but there, it has to be consistently drilling into the same general vicinity. Uh, and I think at some point your ears recognize that they're going to have difficulty hearing the next day. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is, this is, this is a funny thing. Like, um, so again, I, I mentioned when, when sickness came to Japan, like, uh, the night before he played, uh, Mersbau was playing at earth Dom, which is this kind of relatively new at the time club. Uh, I think it was relatively new anyway. 
um, with an amazing sound system. And Merzbow was apparently he was going to be doing acoustic stuff. So people were like, oh, fuck yeah. And he did. He was like playing this little stringed little, maybe that was the Merz bowed instrument itself. Mm. I don't know. Who knows? But it, it was it was so incredibly loud. <clears throat> and I remember exiting the, the club with Mr. Sickness. And he kind of looks at me and I look at him and that's that's all. That was the conversation because we couldn't converse. You couldn't hear a goddamn motherfucking thing. And the next day, sickness has got to play, right? And fucking, you know, Gomikawa Fuji, you know, Gomikawa Fumio uh, are, are going to play and shit like that. And it's like, you know, how the fuck uh, can you possibly manage that? So that's that's another level of harsh is just the, the pure and un, undeniable damage to the ear. Hopefully it'll recover enough the next day that I can actually appreciate the fucking sounds. It did luckily yeah but yeah so so there's a lot of ways you can hurt it harsh um so you're obviously. really you're really you're really drilling the ear holes like that like you're really putting that damage to the ears that that would seem to be consistently where i've been going with that and i don't necessarily recommend that kids don't fucking do it it's not worth it fucking you know watch take take care of your ears man fucking take care of them you want to enjoy this noise so yeah don't save it for uh, special occasions maybe i think well exactly well th- at the at this point that's that's what it is so it's it's kind of good to have these formats that are not portable <laughs> you know like that three lp fucking altar of flies fucking one of the best things ever uh but i've got the tapes too but yeah um some of the tapes uh <clears throat> but yeah i just that, that there can be this ritual, that it can be a special occasion, that I don't have to continuously feel compelled to blow my freaking ear holes out. I can take a break from it no. uh, because I don't, I can't haul around a turntable. Uh, and at this point, I can't haul around a cassette deck either. So like yeah. a, a really high percentage of the noise that I'm listening to is stuff that I almost can't listen to uh, a large percentage of the time because I spend a lot of the time out of the house uh, mm-hmm. on the train or wherever. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at that time I'm listening to my little portable shit. So uh, that's probably good. It's good for the ear holes that, you know, at this point, at this age, uh, they are no longer, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's no longer so convenient to, you know, absolutely, utterly assault and destroy the ear holes. Uh, they need a break. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so harsh noise. Now, my new definition is the shit that I will save for special occasions with, you know, nice little drink and fucking, yeah, I'm fucking, yeah. But there is, but there is this weird thing that happens every fucking time, which is I just keep turning it up, keep yeah. turning it up. And it, it, it just, all, all, you know, I, I confess it's, it's after maybe one too many of one, one thing or another, but it, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Some, something weird, some weird weird chemical I, reaction i think most people can relate to that yeah so and how do you get on in japan the, how's how, how's 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 daily life in japan i mean in terms of you integrating into the culture and also what's noise culture actually like in japan because i've heard i think from the outside right. perspectives people <clears> have this <throat> idea that japan is like the the mecca of noise and you go on the street and people are you know listening to noise and everything like that but then i've also heard from people kind of living there who visit there that it's like really actually super small and like like even more yeah you know marginalized than maybe in the u.s or europe yeah when i first came to japan i was telling because <clears throat> i was working in like a, at that time i was working in like an ikawa conversation school and at that time i was more open about what i did with people uh, even customers and stuff like that. And they're mm-hmm. like, what the hell are you talking about? The Japanese people, what the fuck are you talking? Well, they wouldn't say that in those words, yeah. but they're like, that doesn't exist in Japan. Yeah. No, it doesn't. What do you, no, of course not. What the fuck is this? Um, so yeah, uh, there, <laughs> um, and you know, I, I would even go into record shops that were not let's say exclusively dealing with harsh noise. Like I don't want to name. Anyway, I'd walk in and the guy's like harsh noise. <laughs> Multi- <laughs> I'm like, why are you laughing? I just want you to put up this poster for fucking Mote coming back. And he's like, Mote, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, cut me a fucking break. Why are you laughing? It's good stuff. Really? You got to hear it. He's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. You know, this guy, this, this, he's a, he's a head that's been around for ages putting, you know, uh, all kinds of great experimental music has a label and everything. Um, 
But so it, you know, the noise people do get denigrated, even in Japan. Um, they're like the, like, they are the Hanatarashis, the snot nosed brats, right? Uh, they don't have the, uh, you know, the je ne sais quoi, the, the weight and all that. They don't have the, they don't, I don't know. It depends on who you speak to, obviously, but first of all, nobody knows it exists. Second of all, if they know it exists, they don't think it's any good and they think, you know, the people in Europe or whatever are doing it better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not possible for Japanese people to be doing good noise, right? But I think that's really radically changed a lot. I think one one major thing is incapacitance and just the recognition uh, for the last, you know, maybe a couple decades now that incapacitance is really big mm -hmm. uh, and everyone recognizes that people who, people who come out to the shows anyway, um, whether they're fans or not, will recognize that capacitance are huge. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I, I give you these words based on a few chance encounters with this person, that person, sure. um, you know, but yeah, uh, at the same time you'll have, you know, there will be times when there are like multiple noise shows going on at the same time. Although, Generally speaking, you try to avoid that. Yeah, <laughs> you, you live in Tokyo, right? Uh, Tokyo area, Tokyo, Tokyo area, area. Not, not in Tokyo itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I work in Tokyo, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you really, um, you're, you're known to cut loose quite hard at shows. I have the sense, you know, like uh, you've kind of alluded at I've holding been, a chair I, over your I, head and and stuff like that. And actually, yeah. I, I, I mentioned a couple times in the podcast, but I did actually an interview with Sam McKinley once. And we talked, mm -hmm. we did a full two, three hour conversation, which didn't okay. get recorded. And he mentioned meeting okay. you and he mentioned you doing the worm. And he mentioned, I think even Miko while like kicking you or something like that, like at a show, like you were just so wild. Yeah. Probably, how is that? I can say that. <laughs> how is that? How does that translate? Are there other people doing that too? Or are you like the crazy Canadian dude? That's just like, f uh, that's so really from your position and through your experience, in harsh noise as a super fan and artist i'm gonna call you an artist because you are one um for, well, i mean I, not that we need to get back into this but when did you i mean you're very youthful looking that was another thing i want that really struck me you how do you keep your how do you keep your youthful looks and energy because you <laughs> you must have started <laughs> you must have started getting involved in this stuff when you were then very very young how, how old were you when you were really digging into the stuff, like the harsh noise stuff, and how, when you moved to Japan and stuff like that, roughly? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I came to Japan after, uh, you know, I you know, I did my undergrad in, in Canada and spent another year working in Canada, then I came to Japan. So I came to Japan when I was about 23, I guess, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. so in the context of everything you've seen and been through, and you're very, still very involved, what is your assessment of harsh noise today? Um, honestly speaking, it's, um, uh, it's beyond what I could have ever imagined. Uh, you know, as it, like I, the fact that he, just taking Mote, for example, here's Mote, uh, well and properly worshipped finally, just as one example, uh, there's people doing all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, it, it just boggles my mind just how much awesome noise there is that that's impossible to keep up with. Um, you know, uh, you know, back, <clears throat> back in the early days, I would often correspond with people and get stuff from these people that I just felt that I just had nothing I could say about it, except that it's just, this is not going to do it for me. That is not for me so much the case at this point. There's just so much awesomeness. Um, you know, I'm sure there's, lots of crap and all that, but uh, there's just so much awesomeness. I mean, just the sheer volume of awesomeness uh, boggles my mind. So that's, I, I have a very positive view of where noise, harsh noise, and all kinds of other variations of noise and non-noise and non-music and uh, it just seems amazing, honestly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Does that... Man, That's great. What do you, what do you think noise what do you think noise might be doing in 30 years? <laughs> well, um, 
finding fans and you know um, other other cultures, other other places. Um, I don't know. You, you, you to an extent, you know, uh, we follow the technology, right? So um, it was like. Um, Eric Stonefeld said in an interview once how, you know, we're just imitating what we hear. You know, industrial music is like the futurists, right? We're just reproducing what we hear all the time mm -hmm. with our current technology. So uh, not able to predict where the technology is going to be at that point. It's hard to say what noise will be. Um, I always had this conception of this... Um, this con conception of a kind of a, an online noise black hole into which people namelessly uh, contribute uh, mm -hmm. continuously into this um, massive online, continuously online noise that people are continuously contributing to and um, engaging with. So maybe something like that, mm -hmm. if, if the technology reaches that point, um, as a kind of, I don't know, where noise is more continuously part of your daily life, or, or not. It just continues as it is now. Mm -hmm. Or, or al alternately, it may be, you know, new forms of ent entertainment emerge where people are no longer interested in simply listening to something maybe that's not going to be enough for people mm -hmm. there's going to be levels of stimulation that will go way beyond what simply a bunch of damn sound can do and so maybe that will be a point where noise itself is just a small part of something much bigger mm -hmm. you know that stimulates people on some other weird level that you know who knows so that's that could also provide a, I mean, a template for the growth or development of noise, like what you kind of just described. Yeah. That noise could okay. develop into something more sensory. Yeah. So it, but I, I guess I, I, I just don't, because it just seems to be following the technology. You, you just, yeah, I just keep falling back on that. Like where technologically, where are we going to be in ten years, twenty years? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's interesting. Though, I, I know that I know that you've been having trouble finding. I, I know that you have posted recently. You've like you'd like to find people who can do proper translations of, you know, for for, for say the Japanese contingent. Mm -hmm. We want to get. We want to hear what these people got to say in real yeah. time with the yeah. faces on the screen, kind of thing. Yeah, and that'd be awesome. And maybe the technology is the thing that's going to bring us there. Um, truly there. Uh, which will render a lot of current uh, capacities that we have non-relevant or, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. It is, though, interesting that I think that in some ways, though, noise has some sort of traditional or traditionalist element to it that, I mean, where we're at technologically as a society, noise in terms of how it's made and things like that aren't really following it too closely i mean people are still really and maybe for good reason mm -hmm. you know holding on to a lot of those techniques and technologies and and approaches that kind of came with a certain moment when it flourished you know the 90s or whatever right. you know you don't right. have that many people really following the technology in terms of what's really going on internet wise All right Maybe in a right, yeah. maybe in a wider that's, maybe in a more macro sense, yeah. yes. Well, that's that. Yeah, so that's that's another very interesting thing where I think, uh, like you know, I, I watch your episode regularly, and we recently had uh, Mr. Uh, PTM Jim Haras mm -hmm. Fusty Dude coming on and saying, you know, like the acoustic physical stuff is where it's at, and that has definitely been a strong movement for. 15 years now i mean it, it just feels like we, we're moving more and more into that yeah and further away from so maybe that's another thing that we can see is, is the exact opposite of what i've described where we're, we're where it's total 
not anti-technology thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which, which, which I think would be awesome too, actually, you know, get yeah. more, let's get some, you know, no amplification, no more amplifiers, just straight acoustic stuff, you know? Yeah. Get into the I real world. Maybe that's really what people will be craving because I mean, the more we get tapped into all this crap, these platforms, these phones, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's really what will be cr- really radical and, exactly. and yeah, fulfilling, maybe, like maybe the free, the maybe free, that, yeah, freeing Sorry. yourself from those platforms and that technology. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, perhaps that's where where noise was originally moving, right? It was freeing yourself from, like you said, what people perceived as where things were going, and they're like, screw that. Um, it's <clears throat> and it's maybe maybe there's a tradition there, like you know, it's like. Uh, maybe who, who was it? Was it Egan Butter? One of them that had his tagline: "Irony is dead." You know, uh, you know, it's 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 tra- it's a tradition. We can't wait to proclaim this or that superstar god thing trend dead. It has to be dead. It has to be dead from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's already dead. And irony is dead too, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I think that's just I think that's something that's baked in to people. You know. Uh, we we want to kill these things that we we don't. I think we're self aware of getting too when we're too much involved, and maybe that's where I'm kind of like I can see where my own obsessions and I I, try, I, I at least uh, <clears throat> shall we say um, didactically or uh, consciously try to separate myself from that. Um, recognizing my own mania and obsession and insanity in China, say, you know, that's that's not healthy, uh, you know. So there's, I I can totally see that, and I think I think that would be totally awesome to have this like super like just going right into pure acoustic stuff. Uh, Hoh as the new fucking god of that, while um, and you know, violent shogun maybe kind of helping that along. Yeah. Um, but you know, those are still filtered through technology. I, th- I, 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 I sure. do still think that sure. that thing that um, sure. that Sam McKinley did say in the, that recent second yeah, interview uh, I did with him yes. about this yes. going really into the physical acoustic world where yeah. explosions, for example, or, or those sort of acoustic sounds are the the craft of harsh noise. Yeah, and yeah. you're you're removed from that that loudspeaker even translating the sound you're you're really going from the sound itself to the ear yeah exactly yeah i yeah i, I thought that was a very interesting thing to because i watched that episode too obviously and uh yeah uh but there has to be more than just you know lighting up explosives of course of course crazy crazy ass shit right like um <clears throat> one of my favorite memories was one of those first acoustic gigs that i did it's like i got a bunch of guys up you know, like maybe Kenny and Endo and stuff to like play the mirrors and the styrofoam. And there's Timmy Suarez. She's just holding her ears. There's no amps on. There's nothing. It's just people just doing. (laughs) She's like, I can't take this shit. It's like, you're a harsh noiser, but she's like, I can't take this shit because, but again, then there's that whole thing about what people are listening to. They just want to hear, but louder, which kind of basically is like, what is that? It's like a raunchy guitar, right? It's just that kind of raunchy, heavy guitar sound, yeah. uh, retranslated into this big, which is cool too. Which is cool too, but it's not something that's necessarily felt to immediately be, you know, damaging to the ears. Um, so there's there's all kinds of it's true. Interesting... I, I also have kind of come to the realization recently that stuff that has musical elements to it, like Dillo was talking about to shiv- to live and shave in L.A. and like that's a musical band, but that music is in some ways more disturbing and unsettling and hard to listen to than sure. Sure. the harsh noise sure. I listen to. I mean, the harsh noise I yeah. listen to is like very, yeah, very pleasant. Well, heard, you know? Yeah. Like uh, re- recently, <clears throat> Nice Jen was posting online about, um, you know, Tom D'Angelo, TD, and he's saying, oh, this is the best shit ever. So I was checking out the sound cloud samples, thinking, oh, this is the best shit ever. So I decided I had to, I had to contact these people and finding out, you know, just getting to these these people who are much more, seem much more tapped into that idea of really, uh, you know, uh, s- sound that's, that's really deliberately 
going to go after your sense of aesthetics and challenge that and really challenge that. And what the fuck am I listening to? And who wants to make yeah. this kill yourself now? Kind of, you know, visceral reaction that people have to that kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, yeah. that's, that's what I want to hear right. You know, right now. Um, so, uh, th- those are whole worlds of sound that harsh noise is kind of m- met with and separated from several times, whether it's V8, yeah. you know, Evil Oyster and all those dudes, whatever, uh, uh, Chocolate Monk and all those guys. Um, so all of that, um, that's another whole massive world of um, alienating. That was one of the words that one of the dudes said, sound, um, that is worth pursuing. Yeah, <clears throat> so we've been venturing into fairly abstract territory. Um, mm-hmm. And this, by the way, and this is, uh-oh, are we lagging? Again? This, by the way, is something that I wanted to mention, um, which is, uh, what is it? what is it about this podcast that is so great? When WCN first came online, there was a review, <clears throat> and the review said this. I don't know if this podcast has really reached its proper potential yet. And, uh, and I rejected that right out of hand. Because, you see, this podcast brings one thing that no other podcast brings. And you know what that is, right? I don't. It brings you. It brings you, man. It brings you, because what what you what you have is uh, you're right in the thick of this noise, but you're also your interest and enthusiasm and fascination for the noise comes through every fucking time, man. That's what makes these episodes interesting for me is the fact that you are so interested. And I think a lot of people are genuinely interested. And that's maybe one way or aspect that I feel that noise has is different from how it was in the past. You, there were people talking about it in more like a Jaliet kind of way, you know, like as this weird phenomenon separate from us. But we're at the point now where we can have legitimate people who are right into it, right in the thick of it, and wanting to... We're done with this music, art, blah, blah, discussion. Let's let's get into what is next for noise itself, right? Those are the questions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what WCN is is pushing and, and should be pushing. And I welcome that. And I want to hear more of your guests, you know, spewing on about this topic too, because I think it's a very interesting topic. I don't know if I have anything interesting to con- contribute on that, actually, myself. Uh, but I'd certainly like to hear. Oh, you do, man! For sure, you do. You have. You've <laughs> given us lots yeah. of gold here. Yeah. I appreciate that. Right. I appreciate that. That means a lot, yeah, actually. Sorry, that's, sorry. that's what I, I want. To... That's what I want to do with this. So that's that's appreciated Good. to hear that you. Yeah. Anyway, just it, it needed to be. It needs to be said. It needs to be said. Yeah. So here's the Oscar. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Some cheapier though. But. Thank you very much. See, we'll see if I don't edit this out, but I appreciate it. <laughs> don't don't edit this out. <clears throat> and sure. I want to say to you, you know, you kind of gave me a little compliment earlier about the podcast, but I have to say that um, the, the podcast that you mentioned that you've been on, Bone Speakers, yeah. um, you posted. I mean, it's not it's not my gig. It's it's my friend's right, gig. a friend of uh, yours, and you posted on the special interest board probably about two years yeah. ago now that, Hey, I did this. I was on blown speakers talking yeah. about Cosmoto endos while you were out. And I, I clicked on the link and it was a YouTube video <laughs> of you and this guy talking via camera. And you were talking about this album for, you know, like an hour and a half or something yeah. like that. And yeah. this to me was like such a revelation <laughs> because it was like, I've, I've been in contact with you. I've seen your writing. I've known about your work for, so many years yeah. and that's yep. so common in the noise world that we this is all online but all text based or or audio yep. based of course but i mean then this 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 video where you're just it's just you and you're talking about it and i can see your face and you're talking about this album I'm like god that's so cool i mean it didn't even 
matter what you were talking about exactly. I mean, the, the episode was really fun and interesting. I mean, you, but but it was like but just to hear I mean, you I'm, talk I'm, about. I'm perpetually embarrassed about those things, but yeah, good. Keep but it it's like you're talking about noise, and it's like that's what I want to talk about all the time. That's what I'm thinking about all the time. And you, mm-hmm, here's mm-hmm. a guy who I know from the other side of the world talking about it, and I can see him and hear him. I was like, that's so amazing. And that was literally the one. I mean, there were a couple other inspirations, but that was like the one inspiration. I was like, I should do this like all the time, or like do more of this. Like, like because I kind of kind of this is this blown speakers guy. He does a he does this thing about general different music topics with with different people. So it's not really focused on noise or harsh noise. And so I thought I want to do this, but only focusing on our noise, like with all these people that I always want to talk to. So yeah. that was a huge, huge uh, Good. motivation and inspiration. And I, I recommend everyone check it out. It's, it's, it's great fun and uh, big ups to that guy for doing that. Big ups to you guys for doing that. So that was, I appreciate you guys doing that. And that was, yeah, just, that was the uh, inspiration for white semi noise podcast. Just, just watch the, just, or you can just fast forward to the end when it's, uh, when I, when I did a little video with, uh, with Endo and, uh, boom, boom, Rapongi. <laughs> that was, that was good fun. I, I, I you know, I, I did the episode with, with, with Dave, his name is Dave. And then I spent like you know, several hours just doing that one stupid fucking dumb, dumb ass. Cause I don't know shit about video and anything, right? I was just using a shortcut, right? Uh, just fucking around with it, just having a blast. Yeah. Um, using just the built-in effects on it, but it was, that was that was the funniest goddamn thing ever. Um, <laughs> and while you while you're out is a great, you know, yeah. And that's anyway. And that's a, yeah, you know, but, it, but it was it was a, it was trailblazing for noise TV because noise TV is the future. Or at yes, least it, it should be the future. I mean, it's it's, it should be, it should have been the future twenty years ago. But I mean, like future. But the ability to yeah. the ability the ability to use to to expand the the, the media experience and and at least, at least in a journalism sense, if not like an artistic sense, but at least like in a yeah. journalism and discussion sure. sense is like For sure that's yeah that's it's, yeah it, it it does bring a, a very different dynamic somehow. I mean, uh, you don't necessarily need to continuously see the person's face. You can yeah. uh, just listen to it. Yeah. But at least for some period in time, you still want to kind of get a sense of who this mofo is and exactly. you know where this it is. Uh, yeah, but you just want to get a sense of who they are and like you know, what, what, you know, it's, it, people connect with that, right? It was that Mannerism. was kind of what I was that was kind of what I was going on about with the Wall You Were Out, right? It was um, those two great album covers, the uh, Wall You Were Out cover and As Loud as Possible. What's on that cover? The motherfuckers are on the cover. Yeah, and was on the cover incapacitants are on that cover yeah. you don't get that so much in harsh noise or noise or in a lot of you know the arty scene so to yeah. speak uh but they're there and they're, you know and just endo looking like a total whatever you know he's just just he's having a laugh at whatever you want to think about what he thinks and yeah. then uh you know incapacitants here we are just fucking hammered in a fucking socket but i don't know yeah. whatever the fuck that's that's great stuff you know it's like you know that but that's it it in that sense that's that that's it's making a different kind of connection i think so do you think it has any possible downsides or 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 possible i mean something like all these all these video interviews and seeing the faces and all these you know oh i'm just this guy or i do this my you know what could be the the negatives of that Mm, i don't i don't know i mean it's I mean, as far as noise goes, it's still relatively new territory, right? So I don't think it's worth dwelling on potential downsides at this point, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's still territory that's been, you're, you're like a trailblazer in that, right? So it's like there's <clears throat> maybe once there are, you know, a hundred noise podcasts, uh, interview podcasts flying around, people can start to assess and judge and truly compare and contrast and mm-hmm. though this works this doesn't but i think i don't i don't see any downside personally i mean the maybe, de- the demystification of it of the artists behind the work or the or the work itself sure but i mean the the artists that wish to remain <clears throat> mystical such as keith brewer may he forever rest in perversion mm-hmm. like that rest in perversion um yeah they can decline 
I mean, yeah, so they, they will decline. They have declined. And I know yeah. some people would have declined this episode too. Um, and that's, that's cool. I mean, yeah. you know, that it's, uh, people have different ways of representing themselves or their project, their art, their work, whatever. Um, you, know, you can stick an eyeball on your head and call yourself the residence, whatever. You know, it's like, uh, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, so I don't know uh, that necessarily a demystification is, uh, is always an issue, mm -hmm. so to speak. It just, but I guess it depends on how people come in on that. What's their angle? In, you know, right. some people do like the mystery and do prefer the anonymity. And um, I guess it's it. I mean, truly, you know, interviews and that it's very didactic, and it's uh, it's it's people in some cases possibly reinventing you know, what I was on about, and like, who knows, like, uh, I've told you that I was this and thinking this, but who knows what I was really thinking. This is right. just me now trying to assess where I, where my brain was at 20 fucking or 30 years ago. So not I mean, only assess it, that. but also I mean, then be conscious about how you yeah, communicate that or what you say about it. I mean, that's, yeah. I do like the but fact I mean, that yeah. this has less ability than like a, a written interview to, for someone to be very careful. Yeah. You know, and cultivate exactly. their personality or, or, or answers to things. They have to be a little more on the spot, hopefully in a comfortable yeah, way, think, but being a little more honest, maybe. Yeah, I think, yeah, for example, however much I try, I think my inner dickhead comes through well. You know that. I know that. So, I mean, you, you can you can read in, you can, you can see through me, you can see this inner dickhead uh, very clearly. And that's good. I like that. So that, I think that's a positive. Um, but maybe some artists uh, prefer to not be in that position or yeah. have their art represented like that. Maybe maybe they want the art or the work simply to speak for itself, and that's cool too. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I've had that. I, I, just, I, mean, I, I respect that one hundred percent. I've had people yeah. kind of say that, and I totally get that. I, appreciate. I, that. I, I've kind of pushed a couple of people, and then like, well, I don't decline noise extra so i was forced to decline with wcn I'm like shut up no don't say that just get on wcn come on people love you they want to see you but all right fine fine oh, fine um yeah so what uh, actually um another question from the patreon was uh yep. what's what's the residence reference or connection to your project is there any oh yeah, well, um, I love the residents. I love them. Um, the residents, uh, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, I've never seen them, not even once. Mm -hmm. And even if I had seen them, I probably didn't see them because they're, you know, the, the ultimate anonymous band. Mm -hmm. um, whatever people say now, uh, maybe we know who he was or they were or the people involved, but who knows? And th there's a perfect example of the mystique. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessary to know. So that's, you know, we can make several arguments on this very topic. Mm -hmm. uh, Third Reich and Roll. Why Hitler was a vegetarian. This side explains why. You talk about even anti-art is art. That is why we, we reject it. Does that not come through so emphatically through everything the residents are, were, and will be? Of course it does. Uh, now, they came out of that, uh, you know, Los Angeles Free Music Society deal and all those dudes, crazy motherfuckers, wonderful people, amazing people, uh, which, by the way, you know, would have inspired, say, Hijo Kaiden, for example, ultimately. You know, so... Uh, the residents yep. must be there. They must be there. They're, they're a very important part of just musical history. Um, yeah, but I mean, specifically, uh, you know, no, there's, when I, when I, if, if I say that this track is in memory of Vileness Fats, that's just tribute to the residents, that's all. As I hear a dog, maybe it's a Santa dog. It's a Jesus fetus. Uh, sends no presence in the future. But you know, I had this. Oh, I have this resident story, which kind of shouldn't be told. But it's like I was in this kind of. Uh, it was just in this moment, uh, kind of this romantic interlude, and I had. I think it was Coil was in the background, Time Machines, 
And for whatever fucking reason, at a particular, particularly right moment, it just flipped to a uh, residence track. Dun, 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 totally ruined the fucking moment but like holy fuck we're just sitting there laughing that's the residence moment ruiners thank you motherfuckers you fuckers but okay but it was brilliant um i don't know uh sick twisted motherfuckers uh you know the king and i the funny thing is uh i you know a lot of people know elvis presley and know all those hits but the first time i heard most of those elvis songs was via the residence so it was kind of funny growing up and then hearing oh there's that famous song that the residence did right oh, the... <laughs> and it was the same thing like all those third reich and roll songs right yeah. i was feeling awful bad i asked my friend the doctor just what i had and i said doctor doctor mr md doctor can you tell me doctor what's wrong man and he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. I'm just murdering the residents, but, you know, they're made to be murdered. Um, I don't know. So, awesome shit. Hey, by the way, uh, so I, I, I think the, the, the only, the one and only time I ever connected with Mersbau, Masami Akita, is like, he and I both agreed, Duck Stab, Buster and Glenn, best fucking album ever. Uh, yeah, and he's like, yeah, you're right. Oh, right. That's it. Besides that, you know, he's he's not a man of many words, and he probably will be pissed, pissed off that I even mentioned his name. Oh no, we're gonna have to delete this whole episode because his name has been mentioned. The name that must not be mentioned. He can't uh, do that. Was this in yeah. person or was this uh, via via email? It was um it was after a show, and I think just uh Kenny and I were just kind of tagging along as kind of groupies and just ended up mm-hmm. in a fucking uh Izakaya with Whereas Pow and maybe a few other folks, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, um, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, I personally, I for whatever reason, I never massively got into that whole kraut rock thing. And I don't know how you feel as a guy in Cologne right now, but it it never quite, I never quite caught that bug. And I think the only reason is I just just never. Um, you know what you no risk no return what you put in is what you get out and i just never dove into that it's it's a massive world and at some point i'm gonna get into all that shit all that crazy shit because all these japanese noise guys love it yeah whether your name is mikawa uh hasagawa or hiroshige or yamazaki um, yeah. that's Masada. uh you know they fucking love that shit and uh kraut rock is a thing it's a major thing so um I uh, yeah, I mean that's interesting because I was never really exposed to it at a certain age when you know when I was getting to noise though I did kind of have a lot of people at the same time saying hey check out Can right so right. I was listening to Can and I like Can um, but I okay. never really got into like um, the well, noise Saudi, the more what else what else you got coming what, up what else is going on what else what else can you can you let us know about uh you know. Well, this is the thing, like, uh, when, <clears throat> when this project came on and, uh, this, this retrospective project came on and, uh, I guess it was originally, I was contacted back in 2017, <laughs> do a split with some awesome noise project. And I was totally into it and, uh, was totally not able to commit properly to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but finally over the several years that have passed, I was able to finally make a commitment and get my shit together and uh, recognize that and, and, and get a, and get a bit of proper gear to make the transfers proper, you know? So now that I've got that shit, I feel like I've got the means to release shit. So all I've got to say is uh, once that previously referred to project is done with, I can see myself at least getting back into recording. I don't know if I'd be mm-hmm. back into playing as such, but definitely that. But there's nothing nothing in the specific. It's just, you know, just the world of possibility is wider uh, from this point. That's all. That's all. And the project has never stopped. It's just, just very, very, very slow. <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. Saudi, thank you so much. It was really a fun time, really a pleasure. Great. And uh, keep doing what you do. Yep. 
and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, great. Yeah. And who knows, maybe, maybe, uh, Dillaway, maybe I'll see you. Maybe not. Um, exactly. Yeah, if I you, should go, you. you should go to Dillaway when he comes. I absolutely want to do that. Um, he says, you know, knowing that he probably won't, but God damn it. Got to get back into this shit. You know, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. You're in Tokyo. You're in Japan. That's where every every Westerner every 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 Westerner just the thinks, God, gotta get to gotta get to Japan, gotta get there. You do, you do. I, I've heard that Tef wants to come over here sometime. Get the fuck over here, Tef. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe the Fail Association uh, dude, Greg. Get the fuck over here, Greg. Uh, who else wants to get over? Get the fuck over here, people. Uh, and I'll try to get my ass out too. Yeah. You Jesus will. Christ. We'll do it. What a pathetic person. All right. Cool. All right. Um, it's been totally awesome. Uh, nice t-shirt. Sorry. I, I didn't, I didn't wear a band t-shirt today. Maybe That's next okay. time. All right. Only joking. All right. All right. Take care. Take yeah. care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. In the extended segments of this interview, which you can find on Patreon, Saudi shares stories of his infamous antics in the late 90s and early 2000s Japanese noise scene. His top five incapacitance tracks of all time and goes deeper on a lot of other topics. He was also good enough to send me two DV cassettes of footage from his legendary Fuck My Ass concert series. So I was able to digitize volume two and volume four in full. That includes live footage from Kazumoto Endo and TADM, Kosakai and Hasegawa, Kelly Churko and Government Alpha, and the Tokyo Orthodox Noise Choir, which was Kosakai, Endo, Okuba, dude from Linecraft, Kenny, Saudi, and Joe Lombardo, all screaming at once. You can find all that and much more at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. Thank you to everyone who supports this podcast already. Special thank you to the Maniac Circle supporters, and an extra special thank you to the heavy sponsors, Joshua Peer, Casper Sonnet, Christoph Ruschak, John Ingram, Dries, DF, and those who wish to remain anonymous. I appreciate you all very, very much.